this Sunday at 3 p.m. Pacific time, we will be raising money for the nonprofit organization Faces and Voices of Recovery. And because of that, I wanted to share my story of how I tried taking my own life with pills, all right? I don't like sharing this story, but my goal is that I hope it can help give some hope to anybody out there who's struggling with addiction or depression or even loved ones because this can get better, all right? So in case you didn't get it from the title, we will be talking about some sensitive subjects in this video. If you are struggling, go ahead and you can turn off this video, but check out the description down below because there are some links to some resources. What's up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about mental health, it's about addiction recovery. And yeah, I just try to you know share my experience and share the things that I've learned over the years to try to help out anybody else who might be struggling as well as educate people and spread some awareness. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And like I said, make sure you're here 3 p.m. Pacific time this Sunday, December 15th, because we are raising money for the amazing organization Faces and Voices of Recovery. All right, so yeah, this is gonna be a little bit of a story time. I've been sober, um, I'm coming up in 10, in 10 days, it'll be seven and a half years clean and sober. I haven't had a drink or a drug since June 23rd, 2012. And a lot of people don't understand the, uh, the connection between addiction and depression and suicidal thoughts and all these other things. So for some of you out there who have never struggled with substance abuse, like many of us who are recovering drug addicts or even people in their addiction, even though we might not have the exact same experience, we understand that pain, we understand that suffering. And I share my story because I, I, I want people to know that it can get better, all right? But I had to put in a lot of work. So 2012 was, you know, uh, one of the worst years of my life. It was when I was hitting my rock bottom. So. Around that time, 2012, um, by that time, my son's mom and I, we had already split, uh, split up um, because of my drug addiction. Um, that's what it was, and we were no longer together, and I got to see my son on the weekends. But by that time, you know, friends didn't want anything to do with me, family members didn't want anything to do with me, because all I did, I was just this, this thing that was constantly asking for money and blowing up on people and snapping on people because my my only goal in life was to figure out ways to drink and use drugs and um i had a job uh i was actually uh, a customer service manager at this shady call center which i might do a video about uh this call center was just the worst like just to put it in perspective, and it, it was this soul-sucking job. Some of you saw my Instagram live yesterday. You heard me talking about soul-sucking jobs. Basically, this call center, it it was taking advantage of people who were already taken advantage of by MLMs, and I absolutely hated it, all right? And I might do a video diving into that at, at a later time because I know what it's like to work at a terrible job, but anyways, so I, I would have my son on the weekends, but around that time, like, I was broke. I was constantly getting eviction notices. I was living in this apartment by myself, and it was the most disgusting little apartment. Not disgusting like the area, but disgusting because I had given up on life. And with the way addiction works, like, nothing was bringing me joy or meaning or purpose in my life except for the drugs. That's the only reason why I was alive, alive was to get more and to use more. Um, it got to a point where, you know, I, I hadn't paid my uh, car insurance or registration in almost two years. And towards the end, my truck actually got um, impounded 
uh, I got pulled over and I didn't have anything, so I took it. I didn't have the money to get it back because I spent it all on drugs. And what eventually happened was my son was about three years old at that time. Um, and he was, you know, he was talking, but he wasn't like talking, talking. And, and yeah, like, um, you know, I, I was there with my son, but I wasn't present with my son and I was, you know, getting high while he was there and he was in my care and like, and trust me, I hate talking about this stuff. Um, but anyways, he started going back home uh, to his mom's house and saying, daddy's sleeping, daddy's sleeping, daddy always sleeping, right? And my son's mom, obviously knowing that I had a drug problem, she like confronted me about it. I'm like, oh, he's just a kid and yeah, we take naps sometimes or whatever, but yeah, like it was because of my drug addiction and thank God for people like my mom who refused to enable me, but my mom convinced my son's mom not to let me see my son anymore until I got better. And I was pissed. I was furious about this. Like my own mother was telling her not to let me see my son, you know, but that's part of the insanity of addiction. Like I couldn't understand that. And rather than getting better, um, I just got worse. I got worse. Like, you know, there was a really only two things keeping me alive, which was the drugs and my son. And now my son was taken away from me. And a lot of people, I, I can't speak on everybody's experience, but I can speak on my own. But a lot of people, you know, they, they wonder like, why are people with addictions like slowly killing themselves? And, you know, cause a lot of us don't just commit, you know, suicide in a traditional way. And like, for me, like, I, I was too much of a wuss to do it. I was way too much of a wuss to actually take my own life. Like, but I knew the drugs were killing me. So I was like, I'll just keep using. But um, I was so mad at my son's mom and uh, my mom that I just, I got worse and I started going out and partying more. And this is one of the reasons why I, I try to teach people to surround yourself with better friends because I had awful friends at that time. Like they were good in the sense that I could use a lot of drugs around them and they would give me drugs and everything like that. And that, in that sense, they were amazing friends, but they were terrible friends because they were enabling me, right? They didn't tell me, you know, uh, and, and it's not their responsibility to save my life. Uh, in, in hindsight, a lot of them were struggling with their own addictions, you know, but rather than like saying, well, Chris, why don't you try to get clean? And you know, so you can see your son again, like they'd be like, Oh, screw her, man, screw her. Let's just use some more and stuff like that. So I was slowly losing everything in my life. Like I said, I lost my truck, lost my son. I started getting eviction notices. There was even a point where, um, they, they locked me out of my own house and like, I, I would sleep in my, um, in my friend's living room. Uh, my sliding door was kind of broken so you could jimmy it open. So sometimes after the office closed, I would hop over my, uh, my patio and then sneak into my apartment and sleep and then leave before everything opened up. There was no electricity because the power was off. It was just this awful, terrible life. But anyways, um, a major part of my addiction too was alcohol. Like it started with alcoholism and then I got into pills, but I, uh, I just started mixing them heavily. I started mixing them heavily and every single night I was going to sleep with a handful of pills and a bottle of rum and I was just like, you know, if there is a God, don't let me wake up. Do not let me wake up tomorrow morning because I don't want to do this again. I don't want to go through this whole thing of being miserable and not having anything and just seeing who I can lie, cheat, or steal from to try to get more drugs. Like, I don't want to do that. And, you know, so every night I was hoping that I would just die in my sleep, you know? And I would wake up in the morning to the sun shining through my, my window and I'd be pissed because I had to do it all over again. So every single night I was taking, I, I have no idea why I'm alive. I shouldn't be alive. I was taking enough to that would kill a lot of people. Um, and it's just, like I said, like it, it wasn't like, I wasn't just going to go, you know, take my own life. I wanted 
my substances to do the job. Um, but anyways, you know, I've shared, uh, before about how I ended up getting sober. Um, my mom who had seven years sober at that time, she ended up saving my life. And, uh, and yeah, I was still very suicidal for the first few months because like I said, the, uh, the drugs were the only thing that were keeping me alive and then they were taken away from me. So in my first few months of sobriety, I was still very suicidal, but being around other people who shared their story, it gave me hope that things can get better. And that's one of the reasons why I talk about things that make me uncomfortable, that might make you uncomfortable, because I needed people to talk about this stuff because it helped give me hope. People started teaching me that I didn't have to live that way anymore. But here's the caveat. They said, I don't have to live that way anymore if I don't want to, all right? And if I didn't want to, I had to start doing certain things to turn my life around, all right? And I was just clinging. I was clinging onto this hope with a Kung Fu grip that if I slowly started working on myself, things would get better. And that first year of sobriety was rough, man. I was in California. Um, uh, I, I didn't see my son. I saw my son once my first year sober. All right, so like around this time of the holidays, I'm so grateful that I have that kid in my life because my first year sober, I missed Halloween with him. And that was back in the time when like kids are like super cute and any costume you put on them is adorable. I miss Halloween with him. I miss Thanksgiving. I miss Christmas. His birthday is on New Year's Eve. I miss that following, you know, into uh, the, 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 the next months. I, I missed, you know, Easter, Father's Day, everything. All right. But I had to do that to get sober. But I share this story because, man, my life is absolutely amazing today. All right. Um, my son's mom and I, she's remarried and has another child. We have an amazing relationship. She's one of my best friends. All right. Um, and because of that, I have my son in my life. Like you guys, like I was just telling you how I wasn't even allowed to see my son, right? And just a few weeks ago for Thanksgiving, like because of my recovery, because of the work I've put in, like my son's mom lets me take him, you know, to California. We went up to Sacramento to visit my beautiful girlfriend, Tristan's family. Uh, you know, then we got to go to um, Fresno to visit my family and everything like that. Like because of the work I put in, the people in my life trust me again. And I have so much to live for, you know? I always had, that's the thing too. I always had a lot to live for, you know? But the disease of, the disease of addiction, depression, it, it lies to us. It tells us that we don't have things to live for. You know, and uh, yeah, I get to hang out with my son this weekend. We're going to watch um, Star Wars movies. We're going to play uh, the Star Wars video game uh, this Thursday. We're going to go see, you know, the brand new uh, Star Wars movie opening night. Uh, I have my amazing girlfriend, Tristan. It's her birthday Sunday. So by the way, like come join the live stream for Tristan's birthday and we'll be raising money for Faces and Voices of Recovery. But like I said, um, I don't I don't like talking about this stuff. I've come so long and a lot of us, you know, we wanna leave that stuff in the past, but I was taught a long time ago that we share our stories to help others. You know what I mean? If it wasn't for other people sharing their story and talking about these difficult subjects, I wouldn't be here today. And this is one of the ways I try to give back by sharing about what I've been through and trying to give people hope that things can get better. But like I said, man, like I said, it takes work. All right. One of the things they taught me was if nothing changes, nothing changes. Like if I just sat around, because for a long time, I just sat around just hoping life would get better. Just maybe life will get better on its own. Right. I didn't want to put in any work. And that's why today I do so much. I do so much. Like a lot of you know, I work my ass off. I have two jobs. I have this YouTube channel and everything like that. But I make sure that I'm spending time with my son, with Tristan. Yesterday I had lunch with one of my friends who uh, 
I helped him get sober and he just celebrated four years sober and he's one of my best friends that I've known since I was, uh, uh, since I was a kid. You know what I mean? Like, I find this balance and this meaning and this purpose, you know? So never give up. And if you think it'll help somebody, share this video with them. But anyways, I hope this video gives someone out there just a little bit of hope that things can get better, all right? And don't forget to join us Sunday, December 15th here on this channel, all right? Starting at 3 p.m. Pacific time as we raise money for faces and voices of recovery. All right, but anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, subscribe, ring the notification bell, and a huge thank you, a real, real, real huge thank you to everybody who supports the channel, whether it's on Patreon or buying my mental health books on the rewiredsoul.com or mental health merch that we got in the store. Like, all of your guys' support helps me keep doing this channel and trying to help more people out there, so I really appreciate it. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.